everyone. My name is Marielle Ebrahimi. I am the founder and CEO of Disrupt CRE. We've been around for the last 10 years, hosting conferences, creating education, creating content around how technology and innovation is impacting the commercial real estate industry. And at the time when we started 10 years ago now, uh, there was a major influx of new tech that was entering the market. People really didn't have a connection or understanding to how those technologies were affecting their businesses, how they were meant to be used, the potential impact of using those technologies. And we have come such a long way since uh, as an industry, as a society, as it relates to tech, we are using tech uh, throughout our days, throughout all the functions that we look to accomplish um, in our lives, technology plays a part. So. How has the industry evolved? And this is something I've really been reflecting on. I've been able to take a little bit of a step back and really try to consider, well, if tech is a given, which it is, if tech is a given, what is that next evolution? And I think after that, and this is not something new, but after that, it really had come that, you know, it was really not the tech. The tech is just the tool, but it's really the creativity. It's really the outside of the box thinking. How can we challenge the status quo to do things better? So after we crossed the creativity threshold, we know that we have to be creative to stay competitive. We know that we need to be implementing technology and not just technology, but we need to be implementing the change management and the education around that technology in order to make it successful. Um, so what now? What in 2024? What is this new thing? We've had, you know, we're four years out from the world shutting down from COVID. We've had so many societal changes, so many cultural changes because of COVID, cultural as it relates to our industry, how we work, how we network, how we uh, show up in our communities. So, how, you know, how we, how we make use of space. So where are we right now? And I think that there are so many opportunities in the industry, which is a beautiful thing to see. We may not feel that on an everyday basis and depending on what your role is and what your particular job is, may not feel the breadth of opportunity that really does exist in this industry right now. For me, something that I've prioritized, I've always prioritized, but has become even more part of my life since COVID has been health and wellness, taking care of myself so that I can feel really good every day, so that I can feel productive in my day, that I have enough energy, not just to do my job and, you know, be, be productive at work, but so that I can also have energy to talk to my friends and do social activities and see my family and do errands and just be a human being in life. How can I feel my best? How can I perform my best? Even if it's just living an everyday, you know, everyday life. And so the little things, the little habits, the little ways that I take care of myself are super, super important to me. And I know that it's become more and more of a priority to a lot of people, their own health and wellness, not because it's tr just because it's trendy, which it is, um, which is amazing, but also because COVID forced people to kind of sit back and have the time that they never thought that they have. They told themselves, I don't have time to get that workout in or move my body today or um, cook a meal because I had a long commute and this and that reason. I was too stressed from being in the office all day. All of that went away. All of a sudden we have time, we have space. Some of us maybe were even alone for the first time, maybe ever, that they really just had to be alone. That was, that was life-changing for a lot of people. So taking care of ourselves all of a sudden became front and center. And not only that, but we have this major global pandemic where people are actively falling ill. So taking our care of ourselves really, really became, um, you know, entered into the spotlight. This series, I created this series to explore how buildings and spaces and infrastructure can support humans, whether it's tenants, residents, and guests of a hotel. Actually, how can the buildings and spaces and infrastructure support those people and those communities that are using them and that are living their lives around them? And I think that this is the next 
frontier of evolution in commercial real estate. You might think I'm crazy, um, and that's okay. But a lot of people gave me a lot, a really hard time for many years when we started talking about technology. You know, there would be times where I couldn't give away a free ticket for that person to show up. They just, it's not for them. Can you imagine somebody saying technology is not for me? Where are they now? I believe that health and wellness as it relates to the built environment, the, the built world is the next frontier of evolution because that's the next frontier of evolution for human beings. People care about their health. They care about how it feels to walk into a space, even if they don't know why they feel bad going into a space or maybe why they feel supported and really good when they go into a space. They have the feeling that space is giving them a feeling. They either feel really good or they feel really bad or they're able to be more productive or they're not as productive. Or there may be other things that they notice that they can't understand maybe why that is as it relates to a particular space, but that space is contributing to either success or failure as it relates to supporting that individual's health and wellness. So what can you actually expect from this series? What are the topics that we're going to be talking about? Well, we're going to be talking about some of the stuff we've been talking about for a long time as it relates to sustainability and the performance of the building, optimizing the performance of the building so that building can actually be healthy, not just sustainable, but maybe we're even getting into the realm of exploring how buildings can generate energy, how they can contribute positively to the environment. Is it fostering community outside the doors of that building? What does a healthy community look like? How do we properly go about community development so that the people around the building, the energy around the building, the businesses around the building are all successful to ultimately feed back to the success of that building. What does that look like? We'll talk about materials at some point. We certainly will talk about a lot of the physical aspects of the building. Things like paint. We hear crazy things like self-cleaning paint. What actually is that? Is it really self-clean? What does that mean? We'll talk about lighting. We'll talk about the science of lighting. What does it feel like to walk into a building or sit in a building in an office all day that has fluorescent lighting? You're probably going home with a headache. You may not make the correlation that fluorescent lighting sitting under that all day is giving you a headache when you leave every single day. You just might say, I really hate going to work. It must be the company. It must be my manager. It must be the people. I just, there's something I just don't feel good. I'm not feeling good. It's compromising my mental health. I'm burnt out. What does it feel like when you walk into a new building gym and the flooring is off gas and chemicals or it smells of, you know, heavy cleaning materials? You're glad it's clean, but you certainly don't want to breathe in those toxins. Water, food and beverage, being hydrated properly significantly impacts somebody's productivity. It impacts how hungry they feel throughout the day. It might impact their mood, hydration, food. What are we putting into our bodies? What are we offering to our employees or what's available um, in our building even uh, that we could be taking advantage of? Um, programming, amenities. Great, it's amazing that you have a gym in your office or in your building, but is that anybody activating that space? I know nine out of 10 tenants and residents will say they want that gym, but how many are really using it? Does it feel inviting? Does it feel like they belong there? What can we do to help them see themselves in there, to make them feel a sense of belonging? Talking about belonging, belonging is a major aspect of feeling good, finding success, having a sense of mental health in the workplace, feeling like you belong, feeling like you have purpose um, in the place where you're coming to work every day and the team that you're working with, at the company that you, you know, have a sense of belonging, a sense of purpose, a sense of connection to the message, the product, um, the company at large. So, and there's so many ways that that can be achieved. And a lot of it is starting to be talked about as as like ESG has been introduced and, you know, we've got this E down a little bit, but the S, who knows anything about the S, the G if you figured out the E and the S, maybe you can start with the G, governance. Maybe you can start to have, you know, uh, things in place to actually implement the strategies that you created for E and S, maybe. We're all just figuring it out. According to McKinsey, 
And this article, The Trends Defining the $1.8 Trillion Global Wellness Market in 2024, 82% of the US, of U.S. consumers now consider wellness a top or important priority in their everyday lives. Similarly to the U.K., 73% and China, 87% especially true among Gen Z and millennial consumers who are now purchasing more wellness products and services than older generations across the same dimensions, including health, sleep, nutrition, fitness, appearance, and mindfulness. So what does that tell you about the consumers of real estate? We think that we're in a B2B business, and we are to a large extent, but we cater to our population. We cater to uh, the people who are in our offices, who are leasing and buying the apartment apartments in that apartment building you know i'm looking at across the street who are taking vacations and staying in a hotel and having a, an experience so those are the consumers that we're catering to these consumers this is the direction this is the way that we are going to have to move to capture their attention we see what they are prioritizing and it's no surprise. It's no surprise. This is actually a really positive trend. This is something really incredible that we can take advantage of understanding. And that's what we're going to be doing in this series is really trying to understand this at its core uh, and do something about it. One of the things I'm most excited to start exploring and really bring to light is some of the ways in which we can capture ROI. Because that's naturally the question that anyone is going to ask is what is the ROI on investing in, you know, this new wellness program or, you know, having a garden so that people can, you know, put their hands in dirt or be barefoot at some point in the day. It might sound a little wild and out there, but there may be real science to back how that creates a stickiness in your office, in your workplace and helps people want to come to work. Right. So what are what are those measurements of success that we can start to understand and then therefore strive to meet? There are a lot of amazing conversations happening. I get to meet a lot of really interesting people and um, I'm excited to bring them to you guys every single week. We'll have a new topic. Um, I would love any any messages, any feedback that you guys have for topics that you'd like me to talk about or people you think would be really interesting for the show. Um, I'm certainly hunting for those stories, but I'm going to let my natural curiosity uh, <laughs> kind of unleash in this direction because, like I've said a couple of times, I really wholeheartedly believe that this is a topic that not only people are prioritizing, which if people are prioritizing naturally they're the consumer of the real estate that we are positioning so this will be something that's more and more a part of our conversations in the industry but i also just generally believe that this is something that can help people like in general this is something that it's almost like as an industry where we can give permission for people to take care of themselves to take care of each other to have a sense of you know value around health and wellness when you enter a space or your or your workplace or your home what are those things that we can do as an industry to help people thrive in this aspect of their life and if we can do that we're really onto something so with that thank you in advance for listening to the show and i'm excited to start sharing episodes with you guys next week oh!